Hello and welcome back to another art journal video. I keep getting so many emails and questions about my art journal videos and I wasn't planning to stop them. I was only on a break. So anyway, Mixed Media Tuesdays are coming back and today I will be working on my art journal. This is the Dilutions, the Small Dilutions Journal. Through the last couple of years I have been working on this book and you can see how many pages I have and uh, how <laughs> big it has become. It's super bulky. I, it's not the only one that I'm working on. There are different sizes that uh, I like to create. But since I want to chat a little bit before we start with uh, today's project, I'm going to quickly go through all the pages so you can take a look. Most of these pages are already on my YouTube channel as a tutorial. If you find something that isn't there, it is probably because it's a class that I taught live in some part of the world. So since I am a content creator, I do this for a living. I design projects and I like to inspire others. I do create a lot throughout the year, but every summer I like to take a break. It is really important for me as it helps me to stay away from the craft room. I don't craft at all for a couple of months and I just enjoy the family, the sea and the sun. I live in Greece, so I have easy access to the sea. Summer is and always has been my favorite season and I like to enjoy it as much as I can. So just like every other year, this year I took a couple of months off. The only videos that were going up on my YouTube channel were uh, card making videos that I had pre-filmed and pre-scheduled just so my YouTube channel wouldn't die completely. Art journal videos and mixed media projects, however, do take more time and effort uh, both to create them as well as to video edit them since they are quite longer and that's why you didn't see any of them at all. But I'm back and starting from this Tuesday you will get a new mixed media or art journal project every week. Taking a break every year it really helps my creativity. The only creative thing I do when I take a break is to note down ideas that come in my head. And after a couple of months when I go back to my craft room, I have missed creating things so much that I feel like my head is going to explode from ideas. So if you feel like you are suffering from creator's block, I highly recommend taking a break. At least it works for me. So I have my coffee with me and let's start creating. Now, just because this is so bulky, I'm going to turn the page all the way to the other side. This is going to help my book kind of being leveled and I'm just going to clip those pages together. I don't think that I'm going to work for a lot of pages on this book. I probably will change on a new one since it got so bulky. However, I also love those art journals when they are so thick. Anyway, today I'm going to work with new products from Stamperia. These are designed by my talented friend Antonis Janidakis. It is a collection that has to do with Ser Vagabond from the previous collection, but this time he's traveling to Japan. It's an amazing collection, beautiful colors and designs, lovely stamps, stencils, um, different sizes of pattern papers. You will find everything in this collection, even molds chipboards and stuff. However, I'm not going to show you everything. I think that this is overwhelming. But here is a quick browse through some of the pages where you can see the different elements and designs. And the way I like to work with new paper pads is to browse through the different designs and find something that really strikes me. For example, in this case, it's this girl. I absolutely love her. I think she could make a great focal point for a page. And this is going to be the star of today's project. Now in every collection by Stamperia you will find the same designs in different sizes. So just think on where you like to work. Do you like to work like me on a two page a small journal like the Dilutions one or maybe do you like to work on a bigger one by Dina Weekly which is the big one page book. Maybe you want to work on a canvas or even on a wooden panel. Remember that you can always recreate ideas on the size that you like to work with. And I do switch from size to size. You can see sometimes I create those 6x6 six six ones or even smaller tuck journals. But definitely you don't want to have a tiny little focal point on a big page or a huge one on a small journal. And since I do have the whole collection, I'm going to show you the same focal point in the different sizes that you can get it. 
So here she is in a 12 by 12 page, in an 8 by 8 page, which would be a great size to work with for my journal. Here she is on the 6 by 6 pad, she would be great for a card or for a 6 by 6 page. And then you get the collectibles, this is, uh, these are long pages where you will find all the designs so that you can easily cut them out. The fun part is that you get the front and the back, this is amazing, especially for those who like to create albums. So anyway, here she is again, and I decided to go with this size, but in any case, you don't have to buy everything, just think before you buy. Think of the art journal of the size that you would like to work with, and then choose wisely. So for today's project, I already know the focal point. I am first going to fuzzy cut her, and then I'm going to create a background for her, which is the fun of creating art journals. Now, just like always, down below in the description area, as well as on my blog, you will find a full list of all the supplies that I'm using for creating my project. And since I do have the whole collection of Ser Vagabond in Japan, you will see more projects using the collection in the future months. And now that I have my focal point cut out, it's time for the fun, the most fun part of the art journaling, to create the background. I wanted to create a bluish background, for that I'm going with Distress Oxide Sprays. These are going to give a um, pale look, a chalky finish. I'm starting with tumbled glass and uh, speckled egg. And although in the beginning of my art journal journey I, I was avoiding sprays, they are becoming my favorites. I find that they are so easy to work with and they create lovely backgrounds with lots of interest, with not too much effort. I'm also going to spray some water to help those colors blend even more so that I can run into each other. And I'm also going to bring in a little bit of brown. And this of course is vintage photo which I cannot stay away from. I'm adding some splashes and I'm also going to spray in a couple of areas. Just to make it look more interesting, I don't want that to be completely flat, a blue flat color at the background. Again, I'm going to spray, I'm just working with the background, making sure that I like what I have. Always remember, what you have when you are working with oxides is going to dry completely differently, very pale. So try it out before you do any adjustments. I was really happy with what I have, so I'm going to go ahead and do the next step, which is stamping. I'm going to work with a big background stamp. This one is great for adding texture, visual texture on the background. It has foam at the back, which means that it's not going to cling on an acrylic block, and that's designed this way for mixed media, so that you can easily grab it and stamp in different areas. We are not going for the perfect impression when we are using uh, mixed media stamps. However, if you want to stick it on an acrylic block or on a stamping block, you can easily do that by adding some uh, tape, some uh, double-sided tape at the back. I am going to work with a uh, blue archival ink. I don't want to get a perfect impression. I just want to have something interesting going on at the background. Also, this is the first layer of stamping where I want things to be tone on tone. That's why I'm using blue ink for that. And by the way, the color I'm using here is the archival ink cornflower blue. Now, on this video, I also noticed that I didn't adjust my uh, table lamps correctly and I think the colors appear quite washed out. Everything seems so bright. But in any case, you will see some close-up photos of the finished project at the end of this video. So here, just because everything is so washed out, you don't really see the tone-on-tone -tone effect that I get. However, trust me, it is there and I'm going to show you a close-up in a bit. Now, the second step is to add again stamping, but this time with black archival ink. This is going to add some contrast at the background, and I'm picking parts of the stamp that have uh, words on top. Now, I don't know Japanese, and I have no idea what those texts say, but I'm working with it because it adds visual texture, and it works as a great element for my background. Now I'm done with stamping, I'm going to move on to and uh, do some stenciling. This is a lovely stencil, absolutely love the text on it, and you will see later on I'm also going to use the branch. This is glamour paste, it has some shine on it, and the color is black silver. Now for some reason here I stopped with the black paste to add some white splashes, just because I cannot stay away from them. I'm going to make sure that these are dry, and then continue with my spatula to apply the paste. Now, if you follow me for quite some time, you probably know that I absolutely love traveling. 
I'm really fascinated by the Japanese culture and uh, let's say that this is a wish page hoping to visit Japan soon. So I'm going to add that text in different parts of the page. I'm going to spread it out. I'm not going for the perfect impression. Notice how I don't have a specific start and finish. They are not just rectangle, uh, rectangles of text, since I like them to be more organic. When you use paste, always make sure to clean up your stencils, otherwise it is going to block the openings. And here is a close-up look of what I have up to now. I'm absolutely happy with the background, so I'm going to work on the focal points now. In the page that I use for cutting out my lady, there are lots of flowers. I'm going to fuzzy cut some of them so that I can use them on my page. And I'm cutting way more than I need. At this stage I didn't know how the project is going to come together, so it's always nice to have more elements to play with. Now what makes me happy is that they are front and back, and um, although this doesn't have any use for this specific project, it really makes me happy for some reason. Anyway, I'm going to continue with the project. Again, I'm using the same stencil, nice and clean, and I'm going to add the branch at the top corner of my page. For that, I'm going to just follow a part of the branch with my sponge dabber and uh, brown archival ink, just so that I have the basic shape. The color I'm using here is ground espresso. And this part of the stencil is really versatile. This branch can be used in so many different projects and it can also work as a thunder in a Halloween project. Anyway, I'm going to go over it with a marker just to make it more um, vibrant and defined. And then I have the flowers here that I cut out. I'm going to play with them, decide where they're going to live and then I'm going to stick them down. I get asked a lot about the types of glue that I use. I just use whatever I have uh, handy on my craft mat, depending, of course, on the technique that I'm planning to do. Here it doesn't really matter, glue stick, uh, white glue, or even um, uh, matte medium would work just fine. Now, from this pattern paper, I'm just cutting out some elements. They have text on them. They look like signs. And since I do have the sponge dabber from previously, I'm going to go around all these labels. This little detail is going to help them stand out against each other. And now it's finally time to put my focal point down. I'm starting by sticking those labels at the bottom. They are going to kind of crown my lady somehow. And look that double-sided pattern paper sees front and back. And all these front and back elements just gave me an idea. I was thinking that they would work great for window pages, where you get to cut out a window, stick the element there, and when you turn the page, you can see the perfect back. I think maybe that's an idea for a future project. And as I'm putting my page together, leave me a comment down below and let me know which are your favorite uh, mixed media project that I post on Tuesdays. Do you like this type of uh, double page journal? Do you like the 6x6 or the tag journals, the smaller projects? Or do you like watching canvases and uh, wooden panels? I like to switch them up and move on from one type to another, but I would be interested to see what you like the most. Now, I inked up the edges of the page just a touch with brown and now with my white gel pen I'm going over the elements and add some highlights in different areas. This is just something that I always like to do. I love the whimsical look that it gives on my pages and it really makes me happy. I'm going to add on her a little bit of shading. It's going to push her back and bring those other elements more to the foreground. Just a touch is enough. In the paper pads there are many quotes that you can work with for a page like this one. I decided to go just with a thin uh, strip of um, quote from my sticker booklet that says if you are lucky enough to be different, never change. And that was the project for today. Here are some close-up photos where you can see better all the details. Don't forget down below in the description area you will find a list with all the products that I used to create this page. I hope that you had fun, that you got inspired, thank you all so much for joining me today, don't forget to leave me a comment, to like and subscribe and I'll see you all next time.